Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. So today I'm going to dye this warp here. It is 115 ends of 100% wool. Uh, this is another warp to add to my stash busting blankets, which are on the loom and awaiting uh, more ends. There's 115 ends here, and uh, I'll still be short 100 ends, so we'll be winding something else, I'm sure. Uh, but this is going to uh, keep these resists on there, and they're in four places, either end and two, two in the middle. And I'm going to put them in the pan and then just layer some blues over it, and where the resists are will stay this bright green. This is a lot of wool, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens when I put it in the water to soak. Okay, it's going to fit. So this is uh, warm water. I like to use a fairly uh, warm water because what that does is it opens up the scales of the, of the wool, and it takes the dye more readily. So we're going to soak this um, quite thoroughly for probably at least an hour before moving it into the pot. Okay. So here's the warp. It's been soaking for at least an hour. And I pulled three stalks out of the cupboard. Uh, we have a twilight, which is a deep blue. And it looks kind of brownish to start, or purpley brown, but it does turn um, a blue. So some of these have some sediment on the bottom, so I have to do a bit of shaking. So twilight blue, a uh, brilliant blue, and a national blue. And these are, this one leans toward, it's a little bit of a green. If it's uh, used lightly, it's almost a turquoise, so... Um, there are three, this is sort of a middle blue. So we have three very different blues and we're just going to um, wing it as far as putting it on parts of the warp. So I'll take uh, a couple tablespoons of one of the dyes and put it in the measuring cup and then top it up with water and I'll pour this over the warp. And I'll do the same with each of the three colors, and I'll just keep um, adding more color as I see fit. So first thing I'll do is add the warp to the pan. Let's do a zigzag to separate out the sections. So yeah, to get color in each of the into the inside of each part might be a bit of a challenge, but add a bit of the water. It uh, did turn a little blue, a little turquoise. That's the that's the soaking water. So that's kind of interesting. So this will be high immersion. Let the colors move around, mix. Um, yeah, and that's fine with me. We want it to all end up being submerged by the end. So this is three tablespoons of the stock and then topped up to the one cup mark with water. And this is the Brilliant Blue. I'm starting with that because it's the lightest and there's no acid anywhere yet or heat. So let's start at this end. And this is three tablespoons of national blue uh, added and topped up to one cup of water. Okay. 
And then this is three tablespoons of the Twilight, which, yes, looks brown, going on. Heat and acid will turn it blue. Gonna open up some of the fibers, let the colors get in there. So I'm gonna just leave it for I don't know 20 minutes, half an hour, and see how much uh, gets soaked into the yarn, and then we'll look at adding some acid and heat. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes. We have a ton of color in the water still. So maybe it's time to add, add some acid because it doesn't seem to be entering the yarn at all. So there's about a tablespoon and a half of citric acid crystals in here and a little remains of the twilight uh, color and I'm just going to add it to the yarn thinking adding a little bit of heat will not hurt. It can only help uh, things to absorb. Okay, it's only been about 10 or 15 minutes, but this is interesting. We've got a very pale green here, or almost clear on this part. Quite blue, quite blue. They look like the same blues. I guess there's lots of mixing going on over here. So, uh, it looks like this is already starting to take. We've <laughs> interesting. So I'm considering um, flipping it already at this point. Um, all the blues will mix, um, but hmm, maybe not. I'll let it keep going for the full the full time that I wanted to. It's still not heated, so yeah. Let's do, let it do its thing. All right, it's been about half an hour. And, haha, <laughs> this is clear. This is clear. This is clear. The color's in the water. So I think it's time to flip it. To get some of this color moving through. Yeah, see the stuff that was touching the, the burner is the stuff that has struck. And it's still very green on the inside. We'll get some of this blue. As you can see, the blue is clearing out of the water. And we'll get some of this to take up the blue and I'm going to add more of the dye on this side so this is the bright blue that end. National blue in the middle. And 
twilight on this end. blue. Let this heat for another half hour. So it's been about another 20 minutes and the dye from on top is entering the yarn. So this end is a lot greener and that's just because the brilliant blue is not as uh, strong as the other blues. So moving it around we'll get the, the dye from the sur surrounding water to um, enter the yarn. Just opening up more spaces in the yarn to, to absorb. We can see still fair amount of green in the inside. The idea was to get rid of the that bright green, the Kelly green, which we see in here. So with parts of it will still be there because of the ties. But yeah, might add some more dye to the water, to everything. We'll see what it looks like in another half hour. And another 20 minutes. Yeah, see that's still f quite green on the end. That to me looks like it could use some more color. And that could also use some more color. Okay, this is gonna dry a lot lighter than what we see. So I'm I'm just going to put a a bunch more brilliant blue on everything. That's not the darkest blue. But it'll give it a bit more bit more color overall. And now a bit more blue in here and in here and a lot more over here which I don't think has a whole lot to begin with. And then just for good measure uh, there's another half a teaspoon of citric acid uh, crystals in this water. And it's just helping get the water level up and all this extra dye into the yarn. So we'll let this keep going. I think that's enough color. Overall, it's just going to give the green, uh, lean, lean the green a little more towards the blue, but I think we'll still see lots of green. All right, it has been quite a long time. Another hour at least. So we still have some blue in the water, not a lot. 
But what I'm going to do is turn off the heat, let everything cool down in the pan, and we will look at it tomorrow. Hopefully the water will have cleared by tomorrow. It should be cold and ready to uh, wash and hang to dry. I think we're going to have a good variety of blues in this warp. There'll be a little bit of the green, bright green, and then all the shades of green in between that and blue. So I think this will be a fun addition to the stash busting blankets. It is the next morning and this is cold and lots of different shades of color in here. So this is exciting. The water has cleared overnight, so that's great. Oh, heavy. Oh, look at the colors in there. Oh boy, I love that. Colors seem to become more obvious as you squeeze the water out. You see the subtleties in it, rather than the just sort of an overall dark color. This is awesome. Okay, I'm just going to move this aside. And I want to take off some of these zip ties so we can see. We're going to be washing it out here. So Ooh, there's the original color. <laughs> Lovely. And it's a fair amount of it, even with the skinny zip tie. This is the outside, so only that much was covered, but the interior didn't get the dye as much. So there's a, a variety of, of widths of the green across the warp. And this has definitely come across as blue, not black, so that's great. And then all the shades. Ooh, that's pretty even. Crazy. Wow. So yeah, there's green, and then there's blue, and then there's all the variations in between. Gorgeous. And there is a difference. This is the end where the brilliant blue was. So it is not as dark and pigmented so we're looking at sort of a, a darker green here overall and then the middle part was the national blue yes national blue and there's some parts that are almost teal a dark teal parts that do look national blue and then the end was Twilight. And Twilight is a greenish, a dark greenish blue. So that's what we're seeing here. There's a couple more resist points at either end. Um, yeah, I'll take that one out too. So everything's a little darker than the final color because once all the water's out, it will lighten slightly. Oh, beautiful colors in here. All right, I'm going to go wash this in the sink now and hang it to dry. And then we'll take another look at it before putting it on the loom. Just a 
quick peek at the wash water and it is slightly blue. So, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of bleeding. Not a lot, but uh, just wanted to point that out. So here's the yarn. It has been at least um, three days of hanging to dry and it is still damp. And part of it is uh, how thick the wool is, but part of it, it too is um, the damp weather we have here on the East Coast. It's been raining and misting all these days, so nothing is dry. But I'm going to uh, take out the zip ties and open it up a little bit uh, so that there it can air can get in there and access some of these areas. But I'm loving it so far. I'm loving the the different blues that are here. I'm loving how uh, some of it looks like a, a green and some of it is looking very blue. Blue and then we've got like a navy happening here. So and everything in between. So just gorgeous. This green looks much better now that it's just a highlight and not overall. Yeah, let's open this up a bit. All right, so here it is all laid out. And this is a 15 yard warp. So I just zigzagged it back and forth and there are no choke ties uh, just because they're not really needed because of the hot bath. Uh, this is not felted, but it's become a little sticky, which isn't a problem because I'll be winding from the front so the reed will uh, spread it out as I wind it um, through and onto the beam. So that's not an issue. In fact, it's a little helpful. It keeps it all together as I'm tying on. And I do have a cross. This white thread is looped through and preserving the cross. So the threads are all in order here. But look at these colors. Every dark blue and every green is pretty much here. I think this is gonna look great in my stash busting blankets. And uh, I'm gonna go put it on the loom right now. A big thank you to all my patrons who make all these crazy projects possible. Stay tuned to see the video of the making of the stash busting blankets. And the blankets will be available in my store. The link to that is in the description below, along with the links to my website and my Patreon and Facebook page and probably something else. Thank you for watching!